you need JavaScript to create tabs for your website? Think again. What if I told you HTML and CSS alone could do the job? In today's video, we're unlocking the secrets of building fully functional tabs without a single line of JavaScript. Within the body tag of our HTML file, we'll start by adding a section tag, which will act as the main container. To implement tabs with HTML and CSS, we'll use the radio input and label elements. By linking them, we will create fully functional tabs without needing JavaScript. For the first tab button, we'll start by creating an input element with a type of radio, a name attribute set to tabs to group the radio buttons and ID of tab 1, and we'll set this radio as checked by default using the checked attribute. Next, we'll create a corresponding label for this tab. The for attribute of the label should match the ID we set in the input radio element, which in this case is tab 1. This allows the label to act as the clickable tab button that will switch content. For the next tab, we'll create another input element with a type of radio. The name attribute is set to tabs, ensuring it's grouped with other radio buttons to function together. We'll also assign an ID of tab 2 to this input. Similarly, for the label element, we'll assign the ID of the radio button to the for attribute of the label. This links the label to the corresponding radio input. Likewise, for additional tab buttons, we can simply copy and paste the input and label elements we just created. For each new tab, we'll update the ID in the input field to a unique value like tab 3 and tab 4. Similarly, for each corresponding label, we'll update the for attribute to match the new ID we assigned to the input field. Now that we've set up the tab buttons, the next step is to create the content that will be displayed when a tab is selected. To do this, we'll create a div element with the class tab content. This class will help us style the content later. We'll also assign it an ID of content1 to associate it with the first tab button. Inside this div, we'll add a heading2 tag and a p tag to display the actual content for the first tab. Similarly, for the other two tab contents, we can simply copy and paste the div with the class tab content. The only changes we'll make are updating the ID to content2 and content3 to ensure each div corresponds to the correct tab button. This way, when a tab button is clicked, we can target the visibility of its associated content. Now that the HTML for our tab functionality is complete, let's move on to CSS styling. I've already imported the Poppins font and set up default styles for global and pseudo elements. To begin, we'll style the main container, which is the section element. We'll set a maximum width of 1000 pixels and a width of 100% to ensure it is responsive. For now, the minimum height is set to 300 pixels to provide adequate space for the content. Next, we'll hide all the radio input elements from view by setting their display property to none. Hiding them won't affect their functionality since they are linked to their corresponding label elements. Now that users will be interacting with the labels to switch between tabs, it's important to style them so they resemble actual buttons. First, we'll add 10 pixels of padding on the top and bottom and 45 pixels on the left and right. The background color will be a light gray. For a smooth rounder corner, we will give a border radius of 5 pixels. The text color will be black, and the cursor type will be a pointer. Finally, the 0.4 second transition adds a subtle effect when the label is interacted with. Now that we have styled our tab buttons, the next step is to hide all the tab content initially. To do this, we'll set the display property to none for the tab content sections. Additionally, we will apply a margin of 20 pixels on the top and bottom while keeping it zero on the left and right. Now that we've hidden all the tab content, we'll use the adjacent sibling combinator in CSS to target the corresponding label when its associated radio button is clicked. First, we'll change the label's background color to a vibrant blue and set the text color to white. This gives users immediate visual feedback, clearly showing which tab is selected. Finally, to display the correct tab content based on the selected radio button, we'll again use the general sibling combinator in CSS. This powerful technique allows us to reveal the corresponding content dynamically when a specific tab is clicked. For instance, when the first radio button is selected, we will show the content associated with ID content 1. Similarly, when the second radio button is checked, ID content 2 will be displayed, and for the third radio button, ID content 3 will appear. This approach ensures that only the relevant content is visible at any given time, providing a smooth tab switching experience for users. And with this, it's a wrap on creating tabs using just HTML and CSS. You've learned how to use radio buttons and labels to create a clean, functional tab interface that enhances user experience.
If you have any questions about the tutorial or want to share your thoughts, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.